He went from founding the Bloods in Dallas to finding redemption in prison. And now he mentors at-risk kids through his nonprofit organization, Urban Specialists. His autobiography, A Redemptive Path Forward, recounts his turbulent journey and how he became an advocate for peace and individual potential. I'm the example of an individual from a kid who you probably said, he's not gonna make it, he's a monster, he's a menace, but I turned it around. And I spend the rest of my life making sure other kids don't have to go through what I went through. After losing his father to a 50-year prison sentence as an infant, Antong broke the cycle of fatherlessness by becoming an involved father to his own kids. Antong Lucky, welcome to Pop Wisdom. What is the number one lesson you learned from your dad? The number one lesson I learned from my dad is to be present in my kid's life. Interesting, because he wasn't. Yeah. And so that was a lesson for me, to always be present in my kid's life, no matter what. The lesson in the inverse. Yes. How have you most damaged your kids, either physically or mentally? I think for me, the most damaging thing that I've done to them is be, and I think it's just me being this overprotective. I think that's that that damaged them, you know. I think it's that. I think it's just me being like Papa Bear, you know. Papa Bear is how so? Because I, everything they do, I wanna I wanna know. I wanna make sure they're doing it right. I wanna, you know. And it's me having to let go of that fear of them messing up and allowing them to mess up. I think that damaged them a lot. She's doing, she seems like she's doing all right, so I don't think the damage was too deep. Yeah. What's the most valuable thing you've learned from your children? To listen. The most valuable thing is to listen. Again, I used to be like this. <laughs> and it pushed them away. But the minute I started listening, it brought us close. Kids can make you get it together if you just listen. Is there something in your listening that popped and became like a, a pearl of wisdom in all that? Yeah, if you listen good and listen attentively and you reaffirm what they saying, you have the best relationship with them. That's the key. It's as simple as that. If you listen attentively and reaffirm what they're saying, just repeat it back to them. Man, your relationship goes out the roof. That's all kids want. It's funny you should say that because my my wife, Lisa, says the same thing. She says, repeat back. It's like a, that's like a psychology tactic. You repeat back the statement. Your relationship goes out the roof. They love you for that. I mean, they love you because in that moment, you affirm that they, they opinion, that they value counts. What challenges your patience the most and how do you overcome it? Dragging, being late. You were saying uh, Bishop Omar was notoriously late to everything. My daughter was late this morning, and we talked about this the day before. Like, look, this is the time. This is to do anything you have to do. Do it now. Get it done and be on time, right? And she called me. I said, meet me at 7 o'clock. She called me at 7 saying, I'm on my way. I'm like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> so she got a long lecture in the car. Like, you got to be on time. You got to be on time. I hate it. I hate it when people are dragging, because I, I, it's, it's the sense of urgency that I like. I like when we, when we, and it's important, it's urgent, we gotta get it done and make it happen. That challenges me to my core. You know, I have to learn to, like even with my daughter, I had to woosah before she got in the car. I'm like, woosah, do not come off, do not come off, just come on, take it down, take it down, take it down. And it just broke loose. <laughs> <laughs> and she, she was trapped. She, she was trapped, and I had to <laughs> apologize and then and, and, and reframe and re all that good stuff. What's the most dangerous thing you've ever let your kid do? Drive. That's dangerous to me, you know. I'm letting my son and my daughter drive has been so dangerous to me because they scare me. Like even today, when I ride with my daughter or I ride with my son, I am literally driving from the passenger seat. They hate when I ride with them. <laughs> so you're a terrible back seat slash side seat driver. I cannot, I, I cannot, I, I just can't. I have to drive for them. I just, my nerves be so bad when they drive uh, and they think they're good drivers. Are they good drivers? Well, they say they are. <laughs> You did answer the statistically correct answer, right? Because yeah. that is probably the most dangerous thing we let our kids do. 
I'd be nerve wracked. Are there any things when they were little that they were da- that were dangerous that you let them do? Gymnastics for my daughter. Seeing my daughter flipping flipping on those poles as a father, I was literally scared out of my seat when she was tumbling on the uh, the beam. I just I just saw a bad accident happen. And I guess that's just the father in me, but it was tough. I was so happy when gymnastic became non-interest for her. <laughs> I was like, yes. What sound, noise, or smell do you love? The smell of some good soul food. I love soul food, so just smelling some good soul food is good. Is there a flavor or a smell that that especially is like, that's it, that's the thing, if, like in if, that? If, if I say it, then it's gonna sound so cliche. <laughs> Fried chicken. I mean, fried chicken is pretty awesome. So if I walk in the house and in that season, that, that aroma hits me, man. Do you have a family recipe that's, or just a recipe you've come across that you really like? No, I like my mother's chicken. Yeah. You know, my mother's chicken, she can make the best fried chicken ever, you know. So whenever she make it, I gotta have it. You know, I will fuss if she don't let me know when she make fried chicken. So it's not exactly the same, but it's pretty close. My dad just texted me pictures of chicken cutlets, Man. which is like, oh, and it's like, it's basically the same thing. Yeah, it's just, yeah. it's just, it's just chicken fried, but yeah. with a little more Parmesan cheese. <laughs> I love it. I love it. What's your favorite dad joke or shtick you like to play with your kids or your loved ones? Dad joke? Yeah, yeah. I always, uh, I don't know if I have a particular joke that I play, but I always like to be cool. I like to be cool with my kids. You know? <laughs> but I have the boundaries though, but I like to be cool. I like I like them to think that I'm cool. Are you able to pull that off? Because I know I have no shot at hey, being hey, cool with hey, my son. Hey, <laughs> he just <laughs> it's those weird laughs and jokes that they don't get and they don't laugh and but they know I'm trying. You know, I think it's just the fact that they know I'm trying. You know, uh, I'm not as cool as they are, but I'm trying. I just like them to think I'm cool. <laughs> I think we all aspire yeah. for that coolness. Yes, we want it. <laughs> you gotta have it. What's your favorite dish to cook? Do you like to cook? Yeah. You know what I like? Breakfast. Yeah. Breakfast is my favorite dish. They say I'm the king of making breakfast because I scramble my eggs. My eggs look so good. My bacon looks so good. My biscuits be golden. You know, my daughter, they love, they love my breakfast. I, and breakfast is the most important meal for me. My day don't work right if I don't get breakfast. So I am a chef at making breakfast, man. So I- Do you put milk in the eggs or no milk? I gotta put milk in. If you don't put <laughs> milk in the eggs, what are you doing? <laughs> I put milk in my eggs, yes. It, it makes them so yellow. Yep, yep, fluffy. Fluffy, too. What does masculinity mean to you? Or even, like, what is it? I think masculinity means just being a protector. I think it's balance. That's it. Where Where do you get that sense of masculinity from? When you draw on that, where, where's that coming from? Well, that's coming from my ideals of what it means, and it's my examples that I've had, you know, from my mentors and people in the past that I looked up to, you know. Masculine part with them being protective, just being a protector, being a guide, you know, for me, you know, being that guy. Nothing more, nothing less. What's your favorite household chore and why? Oh man, my favorite household chore is cleaning the bathroom. Your favorite household chore, cleaning the bathroom. You gotta understand when I was a kid, my mother made me wash the baseboards on Saturday with a toothbrush that I thought was torture. But now I realize it serves me well because I'm so clean. I love my house to be clean. So my bathrooms have to be clean. Like walking into a clean bathroom is like winning for me. Like if I walk in a bad bathroom, <laughs> I'm, I'm suddenly realizing that uh, that you, you know you're secretly har- harboring disdain for us after being in our bathrooms oh, yeah, here. Yeah, I, I love it. Yeah, I was just thinking. I said, "Wait, it's so organized and so clean." And I love that <laughs> clean good. bathroom. Say a lot. We passed the test. I'm happy about that. Yeah. What do you want to have written on your gravestone? On my gravestone, I wanted to say, "Each one, reach one, until we all talk." This man lived by that principle. Each one reach one. Until we all talk. This man lived by that principle. Because I think ultimately, like, in life, 
we have to reach back. We have to teach back the wisdom that we got, the pain that we went through. That's our medicine. And our medicine is not for us. Our medicine is for someone else. Everything that I went through as a childhood, growing up without my father, I took that as my medicine to give to someone else because it's someone else who are going through the exact same thing. And just by them knowing that somebody else went through what they went through and made it, it gives them hope that they can make it. That's great. I like that a lot. Thanks for being part of Pop Wisdom, man. No problem. Thank you, man. That's good. Thanks for watching. If you want to hear more from Anton Lucky, check out our full episode of the Dad Saves America show. And please be sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and hit the notification bell for more videos dedicated to celebrating the heroic spirit of dad.